Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the cell cycle. Okay, so we're currently discussing the phases of mitosis, which are within the M phase of the cell cycle. Okay, so we've got to metaphase, which is the point where all of the sister chromatids line up on the mitotic spindle equator, and uh, each within each pair of sister chromatids, one sister chromatid is attached via a microtubule to one of the centrosomes, and the other is attached to the opposite centrosome. Okay, right. Now, the next phase of mitosis is going to be what's known as anaphase. And in anaphase, what's going to happen is uh, the two sister chromatids within each sister chromatid pair are going to be pulled apart and taken to opposite sides of the cell, basically, or to opposite poles of the mitotic spindle. Okay, right. But before this occurs, you have a rigorous checkpoint to get across, okay? And this checkpoint is to make sure that every single uh, sister chromatid is attached up to a microtubule, and moreover, that um, every pair of sister chromatids has one sister chromatid attached to one pole of the mitotic spindle, and another, uh, the other sister chromatid attached to the other pole of the mitotic spindle, i.e. we want to make sure that one chromosome is going to be pulled this way and the other uh, sister chromatid is going to be pulled the opposite way. Okay, now it's not fully known how this happens. What is known is that until this is the case, i.e. until it is the case that uh, each mitotic spindle pole has uh, one of each type of sister chromatid attached to it, you do not get the activation of a protein called CDC20. Okay, so until this is the case, CDC20 will not be active, and we don't know why this is. But once it is the case, and it is the case in my picture, so we can say it is the case, CDC20 will become released, okay? And it's now going to bind to another protein, okay, which is an enzyme called the anaphase promoting complex. Okay, and it's also got another name. It's also called the cyclosome. So this enzyme is going to be called the anaphase promoting complex. Okay, and for short, the anaphase promoting complex is often abbreviated to the APC. Now the problem is we don't want to abbreviate it to the APC because APC, the instant people see APC, they think of adenomatous polyposis coli within the Wnt uh, beta catenin pathway. Okay, so what we do is we take advantage of the fact that it has this other name, which is the cyclosome. So we put the APC slash C to say, sorry, the anaphase promoting complex slash cyclosome. Okay, so that's the shorthand for this enzyme. So we'll call it the APC slash C. So let's color it in. So we'll have the APC slash C, the anaphase promoting complex slash cyclosome in orange here. Okay, and it's attached to CDC20 here, which I'll colour in in red. Okay, now, uh, CDC20 binding to the APC slash C will uh, activate it. Okay, and then what it's going to do is it's going to uh, result in the beginning of anaphase. Now, how does it result in the beginning of anaphase? Well, in order for anaphase to occur, what you need to do is disconnect the two sister chromatids within a sister chromatid pair. You see, the reality is that these sister chromatids are receiving quite a pull already from uh, the microtubules that attach them to each of the poles of the mitotic spindle. Okay, so all you actually need to do in order to get them to separate is cut the bonds that hold them together, which are these cohesins, which are holding the two uh, identical chromosomes together. So, how do you do this? Well, you need to activate an enzyme. So, I'll draw the little enzyme you're going to activate. Okay, so here it is. And this is an enzyme uh, known as uh, separase. Okay, so this is going to be called separase. And this is going to be involved in breaking down those cohesins that remain uh, between the two sister chromatids. Okay, and this will cause the separation of the two sister chromatids apart. 
Now, separase isn't yet active because it has another protein bound to it which inhibits it. So this other protein that's bound to it which inhibits it is a protein known as securin. Okay, so I'll color securin in blue here. Right, so normally we have separase attached to, to securin within uh, the nucleus, well, within the cytoplasm of the cell because the nucleus is gone now. Okay, uh, however, when we get the anaphase promoting complex slash cyclosome activated, it's going to result in the destruction of the securin. Okay, so the securin is going to be destroyed, which means now that our separase enzymes are going to be released, and these now are going to break the cohesins. Okay, so I'll just remind you what a cohesin was. A cohesin, remember, consisted of these two um, proteins that contained these coiled, coiled domains, which were called SMC proteins, okay, which, remember, stood for structural maintenance of chromosomes proteins. Okay, so I'll draw this here. So here is our SMC3 here, the structural maintenance of chromosomes free protein. And then remember we had another one underneath it called the structural maintenance of chromosomes 1 protein. Okay, and these two were then bound to the SCC proteins as well. So here is an ATPase domain over here. And now they'll both be bound here to the SCC1 protein and then also the SCC3 protein will then be bound on top of the SCC1. Okay, so let's cover all of this in. So here are our ATPase domains in turquoise here of both SMC1, the structural maintenance of chromosomes 1, and SMC3, the structural maintenance of chromosomes 3. So here is SMC1. Then we've got the hinge domains over here which connect the two halves that make up the coiled coiled domain. Okay. Then we've got our coiled coiled domain here. Okay, which I'll colour in purple, which remember is these two alpha helices which coil around one another. Okay. And I'll colour both of these alpha helices in purple. There's one and there's the other here. So that's our coiled coiled domain of SMC1. And then we've got SCC1, which I'll colour in orange here, and SCC3, which I'll colour in red here. And remember, these complexes of four proteins, which are known as cohesins, uh, have the two chromosomes attached through them. So you'll have one chromosome here. Okay, and I will draw it as a double-stranded piece of DNA. So there's the double-stranded piece of DNA of one chromosome. And here, then, is the double-stranded DNA of another chromosome. Okay, and these rings that attach the two um, uh, exact copies of one another, these two chromosomes, which are the two sister chromatids together, these are called the cohesins. Okay, so if we want to break apart the two sister chromatids, we need to break apart these cohesins, which are binding together these two sister chromatids. Okay, right, and that's the job of separase. It's going to go off and break the cohesins. And once you've broken all of those cohesins, the two sister chromatids are just going to fall apart, basically. Okay, so that's uh, how we produce anaphase then. Okay, so this next phase of the uh, mitosis process is going to be the anaphase. And in anaphase, what's going to happen is the two... Well, the microtubules that attach to the sister chromatids are going to shorten. In addition, the centrosomes themselves, or the poles of the mitotic spindle, are going to move apart. Basically, they're going to move to the opposite sides of the cell. And the result of this is that you're going to uh, pull one copy of all the sister chromatids to one side of the cell, and you're going to pull the other copy of all of the sister chromatids to the other side of the cell. Okay, like so. So, let's colour this in. So, we have our red sister chromatids here, and then we have our blue sister chromatids here, and of course, in reality, you'd be doing this for 46 different chromosomes rather than just two. Okay, and here are microtubules that are attached to the kinetochores of our chromatids. 
Okay, right, so this is anaphase. We're getting the pulling apart of our sister chromatids in anaphase, and it's governed by this anaphase-promoting complex slash cyclosome rather than by the MCDK. In fact, when the anaphase promoting complex slash cyclosome becomes active, it's going to result in the inactivation of the MCDK enzymes. And not just the MCDK, it's going to result in the inactivation of all CDKs that are still active at this point. And the reason is that not only does the anaphase promoting complex target securin for destruction, but it also also targets cyclins for destruction, okay? And the main one that's still going to be around at this sort of stage of the cell cycle is going to be cyclin B, which remember was the one bound to CDK1 to make um, the MCDK, okay? So cyclin B is going to be destroyed basically, and therefore CDK1 will no longer have cyclin B bound to it, and therefore is no longer going to be active. Okay, so you've inactivated MCDK at this point. Now, that has an important consequence, okay, because we're now inactivating all of the cyclin-dependent kinase enzymes. Now, it was the cyclin-dependent kinase enzymes that were keeping the origin recognition complexes um, inhibited, basically. They were keeping those phosphate groups on the origin recognition complexes. So let me remind you, after we had synthesized uh, the replica of our genome, basically, after we had copied all of our DNA, okay, we did not want the cell to go into another round of replication. So what happened is we had uh, cyclin A CDK2 complexes phosphorylate the origin recognition complex. Okay, so remember, all of the origins of replication still had origin recognition complexes bound to them. Okay, but we didn't want any further replication, so we phosphorylated all of them. And this was done by SCDK, which, remember, was cyclin A bound to CDK1. Oh, sorry, not CDK1, CDK2. Okay, um, now... It's not just cyclin A, CDK1 that can, sorry, CDK2, I don't know why I want to say CDK1. It's not just cyclin A, CDK2 that can do this. Other cyclin, cyclin-dependent kinase enzymes can do this, such as cyclin B, CDK1 complexes. Okay, so MCDK kept the origin recognition complexes phosphorylated. So when we inactivate all of the cyclin, uh, cyclins, Okay, that will lead to the inactivation of all our cyclin-dependent kinase enzymes, and now the phosphate groups will gradually be removed from the origin recognition complexes. So without the cyclin-dependent kinase enzymes continually putting the phosphate groups back on, they'll just gradually get removed, basically. And that will mean that our origin recognition complexes are now ready for another round of the cell cycle. So we're getting ready to go for another round of the cell cycle, even though we haven't yet finished. Okay, basically it's the reverse of that safety uh, mechanism, basically. Uh, when it was dangerous uh, to have the origin recognition complexes um, primed and ready to form a pre-replicative complex, we had to phosphorylate them to stop it. Okay, now we're acknowledging that the danger has passed, and we're going to reverse that safety mechanism, ready to go for another round of the cell cycle. So in anaphase, what's happening is you're also taking off that safety mechanism, basically. You're saying, we don't need that anymore. Take it down. And uh, the anaphase promoting complex also gets rid of another safety mechanism. So remember the protein geminin, okay? Geminin was this protein which bound to uh, CDT1, which, remember, was a protein that was important in forming the pre-replicative complexes, okay? And that was our other safety switch to prevent, um, to prevent us going through replication twice, basically, in a single cell cycle, okay? Again, the danger is now passed, so we can reverse that safety switch. We can get rid of geminin, basically, and release the CDT1. Then if we go into G1 again and CDC6 goes up, we can then reform 
pre-replicative complexes. We have all of the components. We have an unphosphorylated orc. We have CDC6, which will be produced in G1 phase, remember? Okay, and then we have our CDT1 ready to bind on as soon as the CDC6 does. So anaphase promoting complex will also target geminin for destruction. So geminin, securin, cyclins, all of them. So these ones are uh, reversing the safety switch, basically, that was put on after S phase. This is taking us through anaphase. Right, okay, so now let's discuss the final stages then of the cell cycle. So, the final phase of the cell cycle then consists of telophase and then cytokinesis. So, the final stage of mitosis then, firstly. Okay, so telophase is the final stage of mitosis, the final stage of nuclear division. And all that telophase involves is the reforming of the nuclear envelopes. Okay, so we pulled one copy of each chromosome to opposite poles of the cell. We're now going to reform nuclear envelopes around them. Okay, so that we end up with two nuclei within the cell. Okay, and each of these nuclei will contain one copy of every chromosome. Okay, so here is chromosome red, and here is chromosome blue. Okay, so in telophase we reform the um, cell, and, well, the nuclear envelopes. Okay, so mitosis is now complete. The final thing that we now have to go through is cytokinesis. Okay, which involves cytoplasmic division. Okay, so the nuclear envelopes have reformed now, and uh, we're now going to go through the cytokinesis process, and this is going to be uh, performed by a contractile ring, which is going to contract the cell into two lobes, like so. Okay, so you're going to get this contractile ring going down the middle, which will contract and narrow this connection between the two sides of the cell, basically, and you'll end up with one nucleus in one side and the other nucleus in the other side. So remember, each of these nuclei contains one copy of every single chromosome. So here are chromosome reds, and here are blue chromosomes. Okay? And around this center point, you've got a special ring which is contracting that portion down. And eventually, it'll contract it completely down. And then you will have two separate cells formed. OK? Uh, so the membrane will um, join back together on this side, and the membrane will join back together on this side, separating us out into two separate cells. OK, so finally then, the cell cycle is complete. We have formed two separate cells. And this final process of separating the cytoplasm into two halves is known as cytokinesis. Now, we are right back at the start. And if these cells uh, are still exposed to growth factor, they will go right through the same process again, which is why it's called the cell cycle, because these can now go into G1 phase and they're ready to go. So remember, the anaphase promoting complex uh, slash cyclosome, by getting rid of the geminin and the phosphorylation of the orc and all of the um, cyclins that we produced in the previous cell cycle has reset everything and now we're ready to go through the entire process again.